Hi, I'm Rob with the Aquaponic Source. We're here in Buena Vista, Georgia at Blackbird Farm. Uh, we want to show you our new 30 by 60 Flourish farm system that we just completed this week. This is a really cool project and we're actually breaking up the farm build into two phases. So what you're seeing right here and what I'm going to walk you through is the completion of phase one. Uh, and what we're planning on doing is coming back at a later date and to do a, a, a further expansion, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so starting off, the basic overview of this farm is we have a 500 gallon fish tank, we have a uh, PG6000 Polygeyser automated bead filtration system, and then we have a 6 foot by 36 foot Groasis elevated deep water culture system for the bulk of the plant production. Um, we also have two of our Aquabundance media beds and our four tier nursery and microgreen system. Um, so why don't you come with me and I'll walk you through some of the specifics of each uh, aspect of this farm. Uh, so right here, as I mentioned, we have our 500 gallon fish tank. Um, this is where all the fish are going to be produced in the system. Uh, I believe the farmer's planning on raising either tilapia or catfish in here. Uh, and we're planning on about a little over 200 pounds of fish production uh, annually. A um, little bit further down, this is as I uh, mentioned our Polygeyser bead filter. So this is an automated bead filtration system. It does all of the mechanical and biological filtration for our system. And the really nice thing about this is it doesn't take up a lot of space. It has a huge amount of capacity, a lot of water flow volume, things like that. But the best thing by far is the maintenance. I mean, the only thing you have to do uh, to clean out your system and to maintain it is to open a valve right here, the sludge goes into a bucket, and you're done. You know, uh, cleaning your filter takes all of 10 seconds. Um, so what do we do with that sludge? We take our sludge in that bucket and we put it into our aerobic mineralization system. So that's over here. We have a roughly 180 gallon tank. And what we're doing is we're vigorously aerating that um, sludge that comes out of the filter. And heterotrophic bacteria are breaking that down. And what they're doing is they're taking that fish waste and they're making additional nutrients available for our plants. And so periodically we'll shut off the air, we'll let solids in that tank settle to the bottom and we'll just skin off the uh, clear water on the top and that will go into our um, hydroponic or aquaponic uh, plant production system. Um, so in here are our sump tanks. Um, this is a, a dual sump system that has the ability to operate coupled or decoupled. And so what that means is that we can operate the system as a completely um, independent recirculating aquaculture system. So just, you know, our filter is doing everything we need for our fish production. We're not relying on our plants for filtration. And we can operate our plant system as a fully closed loop hydroponic system. Uh, and so that's especially useful during startup in a farm where, let's say, you only have fingerlings in your tank and they're not big enough to uh, provide all the nutrients our plants need. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll decouple our systems, we'll separate them and isolate them. Uh, we'll raise our fish in one tank and then we'll use a fish safe, organic, hydroponic nutrient solution um, to grow our plants. And then when the fish are big enough, we can couple the system together. Um, the nutrient solution that we use isn't harmful to fish. Uh, or it can be flushed beforehand. Um, and then, basically, when the fish are big enough, we, uh, they can take over and it will become a fully recirculating aquaponic system where the, both sump tanks are joined and everything flows together. So that's a very brief overview of how we design our systems, at least our commercial systems, uh, and how they operate. Um, so, working down the line here, we also have our um, Hanna Grow Line monitor. That's just keeping track of our pH, temperature, conductivity of the system. Um, it will graph all of our data over time and it does allow you to export that data um, and bring it into your computer. Uh, and we also do have uh, internet equipped monitors available. This is just one we opted for in this circumstance. Um, down here, this is our Aquabundance media bed system. We have two media beds. This is where uh, we're going to do production of longer term crops, typically fruiting crops, so your tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers fruit trees, uh, you name it, if you want to play around, this is a great place to do it. Uh, so starting off, we only have two beds right now. As I mentioned, we're going to expand in the future, so eventually we'll have five media beds here. Uh, and that would just be a great place to get a little bit of production. Now this is not going to be the big money maker of the farm. This is a good place to experiment with crops, and also, for instance, if you're doing a CSA style um, business plan with your farm, you know, it's a good way to give your customers a little bit of variety other than uh, you know leafy greens and herbs that you might produce in your deep water culture. So these are our media beds. Um, working our way down now we have our Groasis 4 tier 
uh, nursery and microgreen system. So there's four tiers of plant production. This is fully hydroponic, isolated from the system. You can use aquaponic water in this, or you can use a low strength hydroponic nutrient solution. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all of our seeds starting here. So we'll put in our plug trays uh, onto these tiers. You fit a total of 16 standard size 1020 trays um, and a total of uh, around 3,000 seedlings at once. Now, this farm in this state doesn't need 3,000 seedlings you know, every couple of weeks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize one or two tiers for nurseries and then the others will be for microgreens. So it's a great place to grow micros, uh, another great high value crop that you can sell, um, you know, especially restaurants really like those. So this allows you to do that. Uh, each tier has grow lighting built in. Uh, they're all individually controlled. Um, so really cool system, doesn't take up a lot of space but affords you a lot of production. Um, and so now let's talk about uh, kind of the, the, uh, the, the, the main part of the system. This is our Grow Oasis uh, elevated deep water culture system. This is a six foot by 36 foot model. Um, and so what we do is we take our system and we elevate it to waist high right here. So it's a really nice working height for when you're on your plants. You don't have to worry about bending over over time, things like that. Um, on the end here, these are our nursery lattice boards. And so um, between the uh, nursery system and our main grow out deep water culture, uh, boards, we put them into these lattice boards. And so this uh, spreads the plants out a bit. Uh, we grow them in these boards. We transplant them in for about two weeks. It allows them to get a little bit bigger before moving them into our main production boards. And it affords us uh, additional production and it speeds up our harvest uh, cycle from the time that they hit the main boards to when they harvest. So these are our lattice boards. Uh, our main production rafts are uh, they're beaver plastics, uh, 28 uh, cell uh, raft boards. So these are food grade raft boards uh, designed for hydroponic growing uh, and they work really well. We've been using them for years and years. And so this is where you're going to grow things like your, your lettuce, your herbs, other types of leafy greens. Shorter term crops uh, work really well. Um, spinach, bok, spinach, bok choy, tat soy, you know, you name it, those types of crops. And so what we do here is we're going to uh, take our plants from our transplanting rafts, we put them into our main production boards, and then we harvest from the far end down there. And so what that does is it acts like a conveyor belt. We harvest from that end and we replant from this end. And so as the plants grow, they get shifted down the trough. So it's like a big conveyor belt where you know, the plants start their life on this side of the farm and they're harvested down there. So a really great system, again, super ergonomic. We build them in two foot, four foot, six foot or eight foot widths by any length and in increments of four feet. So completely modular, customizable, uh, a great system. And this is gonna do the bulk of the production in the farm. Uh, so as I mentioned a couple of times, this is just phase one. We will be expanding to phase two. For phase two, we're going to be adding in an additional deep water culture trough. And so the plan here is it'll probably be an eight foot wide by 36 to, to 48 foot trough. We're not sure exactly how long it will be, but we're going to more than double the plant production uh, in the system by adding an additional trough. So that's really easy to do. We start out with this and we can just add it on later. Um, to keep up with that plant production, we are planning on adding an additional 500 gallon fish tank. And so that's why we went with that polygeyser bead filter. It has that additional capacity to keep up with uh, the, the, the fish load and what the plants are gonna require. So basically phase two, another fish tank, another uh, deep water culture trough for production. And then we will be doing a much smaller transplanting trough, uh, a two foot by about 20 foot or so uh, elevated trough. So a skinny one. And that's just where we're going to use these transplanting boards and have a trough just dedicated to the transplanting phase of the farm. So, um, I hope you enjoyed. That uh, is, you know, um, this Blackbird Farm, as I mentioned, in Buena Vista, Georgia. Um, and, uh, you know, check back in the future. We'll be sure to post some updates with some, uh, some plants and fish in the system. Thank you.